students making blankets, uh, actively making blankets for the four or so hours that we are there. And it has become a tradition, a, a time-honored, beloved tradition uh, at Bryan High School. And I couldn't be happier uh, that Jenny was able to join us today because she always has just the most amazing and insightful things to say about our students and just about how wonderful this community partnership has been for us. So I'm going to turn it over to her. Let's say that you and I are going to sit down and we're going to plan a big charity event. An event that invites Omaha, Council Bluffs, and all the surrounding area to come together for a good cause. We'll invite small children, elderly people, and everyone in between to come, and it needs to be free of charge. Best of all, I tell you, I think I want high school students to run this event. I'd like them to be there early, set everything up, stand at all the doors to carry in supplies and help our elderly guests find their way. These same kids need to stay for the entire time, working alongside the guests that show up for our event. They should be gracious and cheerful and be willing at the drop of a hat to help with any situation that comes up. At the end of the event, they need to neatly pack everything away so that in a couple of months, they can do it all again. Sounds like a challenging proposition. My name is Ginny DeBates, and I'm the coordinator of Omaha Project Linus. Each year, the amazing honor students of Bryan High School host such a charity event for our organization not once, but twice a year. They work hard. They smile, they visit with all of our volunteers, they never let us down. Through their hard work again, twice a year, our organization collects roughly 800 or so new handmade blankets that we give to local children in need. Many of these blankets are made by the high school students themselves. Now you might think that an event such as this mainly benefits the children who actually receive those blankets but I don't think so. When I speak to our Linus volunteers who have attended these events, yes, they're touched by the blanket making. However, they are also inspired by this wonderful group of high school students who take the be kind motto one step further. For them, it's not just words on a t-shirt or a poster in a hallway. They put kindness into action and it shows. Omaha Project Linus is blessed to be a recipient of these students' hard work. Thank you. I have brought with us tonight um, not just current NHS members, but this event has had such an impact on our students that many of our former NHS members come back and participate. So in addition to some current NHS members, there are some Brian High alumni here that also continue, continue to participate in that event. So I, I hear that you might have some questions for them, so I'll gladly turn it over to them. So real quick, uh, it, it, you guys don't mind, would you please introduce yourself um, and tell us what grade you're in or what are you, what are you doing post high school? Um, and something interesting about your project of what project line is. Okay, so first off, I'm Teresa Williams. I am a senior and this is my first year a part of NHS. Something I received from not only NHS but doing the project Linus was satisfaction, knowing that I can help other people by not just giving back money or gifts, but giving back my time and my dedication and feelings towards people in need. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jaden, and I'm a senior at Bryan. Um, this is my, oops, sorry. Okay, this is my third year in NHS. Um, I think this is also my third year doing Project Linus, and I think that's a great way. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps on doing that. I think that's a great way to give back to the community, and it literally takes like not that much time or effort, and it just I think that could really change people's lives by just giving them a blanket. So I think it's important that we keep doing it. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Esme Rodriguez. I'm a returning Bryan High alumni. I'm a freshman at UNO. Um, something interesting about Project Linus is that we make these blankets with lots of love. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Selvin Rivera, and I'm also a freshman at UNO. And what I like about Project Linus is uh, seeing the, like all the community getting involved, not just students, but like like elder people come and help, like younger. So it's just the whole community getting together and work as a team. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Cisneros. I'm a senior at Bryan High School. And something I really enjoy about being a part of Project Line is, is given the opportunity to give back to a community that I also live in. Like, that's me, too, you know? Not just giving out back to them, but that's also where I'm staying and people I care about are staying. Thank you. Well said, everyone. Thank you guys so much. Um, colleagues, do you guys have any questions or comments for these students? Mrs. Cracky. I, I think we've seen a couple of you here before at the board meeting. But I want to thank you for coming in. Just the name of Project Linus. So does that ever get Snoopy stuff in it, in your Project Linus? You're not in your head? Because I, I don't know who doesn't like Snoopy, so that's a plus for you right there. Do you guys know what, who Snoopy is? I'm sorry, I just want to make sure. Everybody I, I, it took knows me that. A it took me a minute. <laughs> oh, it did? Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Cassidy. Thank you. Um, I guess kind of to piggyback off of Mrs. Kratke, what is the background? Why is it named Project Linus, if you know? And second, um, I'm kind of curious, how do you distribute the blankets? I can uh, picture all of you working together after school making these blankets, but how are they distributed? So Jenny could speak to, I know that Project Linus is a national organization and Omaha is lucky enough to have a chapter. Um, and one of the, my favorite parts to watch is, and I think Esme has been on the bundling table a couple of times. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, anybody else on the bundling table? Okay, so I'll explain what that means. Um, so as the blankets are coming in, every single one of them gets tagged so that the community knows that uh, this blanket was made uh, through a volunteer effort and that um, it was meant to reach out to the, that person receiving it that's going through that, that terrible time in their life. So I'll have Esme speak to um, that bundling process and then um, from there people come in and pick up the blankets or Jenny and her crew load up literally hundreds of blankets in various vehicles and then distribute them to uh, local hospitals, um, to local emergency services, etc. So Esme, I'll let you speak to So the whole event, event consists of multiple students creating blankets. And as they're finished with one blanket, they go over to a table there's a main table and there's a couple of people um, just putting tags on these blankets and they wrap them up um, with these ropes, not, well, kind of ropes. Um, and basically, we make bundles throughout the whole day and we have a whole stack of them. And then once the event is done, we roll up these stacks of blankets into multiple vehicles and that usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour depending on you know how many blankets um, we have and so um, you know it's not just making the blankets but also putting them in the vehicles and you know um, organizing that so yeah it's a lot of work thank you miss snipe um, I do have a comment and that is I heard the constant theme of giving back so just keep that attitude because giving back is good for you as well as for the people that you're giving back to um, if you ever uh, have any opportunities for me to come visit one of your programs please let me know because I would love to but I'm curious to hear from um, Tanya, Jaden and um, Jacqueline what are your plans for after high school once you've um, graduated? I'm really looking forward to furthering my education and going to UNO. Um, I'd like to study business administration and eventually try to get uh, become a lawyer, go to law school. 
Um, I plan to go to college. I'm not really sure where yet, but I either want to go to California or Texas. And I want to study in psychology, and I also want to become a lawyer. So I'm having like this whole mental breakdown over whether I want to be a PA or an MP. So this awesome lady at my job on Friday gave me this whole idea of, oh, maybe you should go shadow them at different colleges and different schools and different places and see how you like them and see which one you'd rather be. So kind of on the fence of picking a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. So mm. we'll figure out in a couple years. Those are good problems to have. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any comments or? Well, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you. We would love to shake your hand and congratulate you and then take a photo here when we're done. So everybody, please give them another round of applause. Moving on to Board and Superintendent Communications, Dr. Logan. Good evening, President Snow, members of the Board of Education, and those here um, in attendance and those uh, watching the streaming video. Thank you for, we're going to start this afternoon, this evening rather, with thank you for your support uh, for our strong support for our 10,000 villagers campaign. I'd like to thank Mr. Jeremy Maskell and Ms. Lisa Utterback for their leadership of the project. We uh, came together and decided we wanted to raise uh, funds to make sure that our young people are warm this winter and with the generous donations of the community, uh, which total close to uh, $50,000 we are able to purchase more than 10,000 hats, 10,000 gloves, and 10,000 scarves. That's each, 10,000 each of those, for our young people to make sure that they are prepared when they uh, and dressed warm for the weather as they catch the bus or walk to school this winter. As we focus on school attendance, our goal is to ensure that no student goes without winter weather gear or misses school for lack of appropriate winter weather outerwear. We'll distribute the hats, gloves, and scarves with those donations this Saturday morning. We'll be communicating directly with our schools and parents within the next few days to share those details. We would also like to thank the Omaha Public Schools Foundation for their partnership in this effort. Uh, a week ago, or mm, 10 days ago, I was able to uh, receive on behalf of the Omaha Public Schools in partnership with the University of Nebraska at Omaha the, an award uh, for Urban Education Impact. The award, the Shirley, Dr. Shirley S. Schwartz Urban Education Impact Award honors an outstanding partnership between a university and an urban school district that has, that has had a positive and significant impact on student learning. The Omaha Public Schools community and the University of Nebraska Omaha were honored for the cadre pro program uh, through the University of Nebraska at Omaha. We are honored to receive this recognition and extend kudos to all who played a role in garnering this noteworthy recognition. What was even more special was that Dr. Shavana Holman was with us and she was a participant in that program. So for her to be along there along with uh, Dr. Nancy Edick and Christina Wilcoxon, Dr. Christina Wilcoxon 
from the University of Nebraska Omaha made the day even more special. On the November the 11th, we will honor our veterans. We have many, many uh, folks who work here in the school district who are also veterans and we'll be putting something together to honor them as well. In addition, we have uh, started, uh, soon to start, our Here Comes the Bus pilot for our middle schools coming to elementary school very soon miss cassidy i am looking out for you i know you're watching and i'm going to make sure we get this done it looks as though we are uh, on we are on track uh for uh, a launch very soon here for our middle schoolers and then we'll move on to our early to our elementary school students and we will exceed the timeline that we had last year that we said last year uh, with lots of uh, encouragement uh, from from some of our several of our board members and we appreciate that encouragement to move that uh, up and so we do anticipate having our el elementary school pilot sometime in january right in time for the heart of the winter weather uh, we have kudos to all seven of our ops high schools who participated in the 2019 state marching band contest you represented uh, omaha public schools well and last week, we celebrated the 100th birthday of Dr. Uh, Craig Fullerton. His family uh, was in attendance. He has passed on. Uh, and it was a lovely uh, opportunity to be with the Fullerton Elementary School uh, community and for the young people there to understand and uh, know uh, for whom their school is named. Dr. Craig Fullerton was honored with the naming of the school as an OPS assistant superintendent and his tremendous legacy of creating new opportunities for students to learn through programs, especially focused on communications. Uh, I learned while I was there that Dr. Craig Fullerton was a person who was very instrumental in the establishment of, K of uh, KIOS, and that was very, very cool to uh, see, and it was wonderful to meet his family as well. This concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Logan. Uh, colleagues. Board members, Mrs. Godding. I too was very privileged to be at the Fullerton 100th birthday party, which was just um, great and it brought back so many memories. So I want to thank a former teacher, uh, Sally Remeyer, for all of the work that she did to help gather pictures and put scrapbooks together and have everything for the families to see. It was wonderful. And as um, Dr. Logan said it was also a privilege to hear all of the wonderful things that Dr. Fullerton really brought to the district. Everything from all day kindergarten to KIOS and a number of other things. So um, it was great to be there and celebrate that as well. And then I just want to give a shout out. I, I often give shout outs to the Burke Drama Department. I want to give a shout out this week to Central High School and the drama department and the production Hairspray. The students did an absolutely phenomenal job. The talent was unbelievable. Um, you felt like you were at a community playhouse production. And so I just want to give them a shout out. They worked hard. Were there late? I'm sure um, struggled getting all their homework done. But um, they did a great job of entertaining um, the, the public. And so I, I always encourage people to look and see when our plays and productions are taking place because it's um, great entertainment and a really inexpensive date night. So um, think about that for the future. Thank you. Ms. Cassidy. Thank you. Well, um, obviously we are all in the midst of winter weather. It's pretty much, I feel like we've skipped over fall and we're headed right to winter. Um, it made me think of Omaha South High School. Um, they are hosting a coat drive. Coat mittens can be used and worn, gently worn, but um, their counseling department is, I think it's their second annual. So if you are like me and need to go through old coats for kids and yourself, they're taking any sizes. They have lots of people from the community that are kind of now um, aware of it and come in and if they're needing in need, they can come in and kind of go through the selection. So um, I know I think they're doing it all the way through Christmas break. So if you have old coats, hats, gloves, you can head into South High and they'll let you head on into the counseling department where they're taking them. Mrs. Cracky. I, I guess I would concur that uh, I want to go back to the musicals and the plays. I don't think the public has any idea about how good the productions are 
and how much time they spend doing them. And I remember taking a retired teacher to the one at South High, and she just was amazed. She had no idea. And it isn't just like, you know, it's not just like every day, because when you go there and their summer program it is just out of this world, whatever it is that they're putting on, I always am anxious to know, as well as the other schools and the high schools. They do great things, and it's really fun to go and watch them. So I would encourage the public, because senior citizens do get in free to those programs, and so I think we have a lot of senior citizens out there that would have an enjoyable evening. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I had a note somewhere. Here we go. Um, on Thursday, I believe November, I had the date wrong, and I, I apologize. November 7th, I believe it's Veterans Shine On. It's the fourth year. All of OPS's color guards will be present, uh, and they'll be lighting up Memorial Park. Uh, with their Christmas lighting that they'll be, their holiday lighting they'll be doing. Um, so if you guys have some time to stop by from 6 to 7 and have some free hot chocolate and desserts and participate with the OPS Color Guard from all seven high schools, um, it'll be awesome to attend. So that's my note there. Um, our next thing that we have on the agenda is public comment. We have one public comment. <clears throat> the board has adopted policy 8346, which provides public comment for a period of one hour. That same policy limits the individual speaker to a maximum of five minutes. We ask that you respect that time limit. Mr. Ray will let you know when you have one minute remaining, when you have 30 seconds remaining. If you are in need of an interpreter, please let Mr. Ray know, and one will be, one will be provided for you. If the subject of your public comment is related to a particular student or staff member, we ask that you not mention the student or staff member by name and instead provide that information to Mr. Ray. He will insist us in looking into those types of details for you. If you do not get an opportunity to speak and would like to submit any written commentary, please let Mr. Ray know. One, he will make sure each board member gets a copy. As a reminder, we ask that you please spell your name and state your address before you begin your public comment. Our only speaker today is Larry Storer. Larry, <clears throat> Larry Storer, S-T-O-R-E-R, -E 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska. I'd like to speak about, I guess to start with, the Open Meetings Act. And I think it would be nice if uh, the local media would publish that in the newspaper so that the citizens can know what the intent of that act is. As I read that act, the intent is for more openness and uh, transparency for citizens to be able to attend public meetings. But there's also some guidelines that are spelled out in there about uh, rules and the reasonableness of rules. My overall feeling of that is it's not intended to give a public body a, a vehicle for shutting down or quelling public comment. Everybody has uh, every elected body should have certain rules. There are no rules printed here. Um, there's no rules about the comments. So I guess you can comment on anything. Problem is, you might like to comment about what's on the topic tonight. But you can't because you have us comment before you get to your topics. I think that violates the, whoops, excuse me, the intent of the Open Meetings Act the intent of civics, the intent of the Americanism bill, which we, you know, we'd like to hear more about that too. But we don't get to discuss those things at this body. This is a, a whole different agenda. And I think the Open Meetings Act would say the agenda should give us a citizen a, a reasonable notice, at least 24 hours, probably more, but also some reasonable knowledge about what's on the agenda so that we can plan our day to come down and maybe comment on what's on the agenda. But there's nothing there. It doesn't say anything. It's just an outline. What citizen is going to waste their day coming down for an outline? So I might also add that you could save some of my tax dollars by not even printing this. It's really not worth what on the paper. It's difficult to find information on the website much more difficult than last year and so are these less information than last year so are we moving away from citizen involvement and my final question would be 
in terms of transparency, it's my understanding from a local radio station that there was a brawl at Central High School. I'd like to know if that was true. Why is there nothing in the news about it? Is it being covered up or what? I pay tax dollars. I'd like to know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just for the public, we do have the Open Meetings Act posted on our wall. Our agendas are posted online at least by Friday. Um, we try to get them out by Thursday by 5 p.m., which is posted on our website. You click on the Board of Education under there, click on Meetings. You can click on all the documents that are posted there. Um, the consent agenda. Uh, we moved item I-9, the authorization of the brokerage, to action item, which is J-1B. Um, so that will not be on the consent agenda, but I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda that is here before us. Move. Second. <laughs> There's a motion on the floor by Mr. Smith, second by Mrs. Cracky. Uh, any abstentions? Seeing none, uh, hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Perlman? Aye. Smith? Aye. Snipe? Aye. Snow? Aye. Cassidy? Aye. Godding? Aye. Cracky? Aye. Seven aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to our action item J1A. It is the, keeps moving around here, the 2020-2001 uh, calendar revisions. Uh, Scott Smith Bonney, Head of Research. Or the CEO of the OPS Research Department. I know, I like that. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Logan, President Snow, members of the board. As was prefaced, I'm here tonight to talk to you about three potential changes for your consideration to the 2020-2021 calendar, hereafter referred to as the 2021 calendar. We will address these each in turn, um, starting first with election day, November 3rd, 2020. 20 OPS schools serve as polling places impacting one in three students in Omaha Public Schools. The number of students impacted is greatest at secondary, given that our secondary schools are larger. However, a greater number of schools are impacted at the elementary level. Therefore, we'd like to put before your consideration tonight our first change, that we offer November 3rd, 2020 as a no school day for students at all grade levels. Staff will report maintaining our contracted duty days for that year. Um, and teachers will spend the day uh, receiving professional development in lieu of teaching. The ch second change for your consideration this evening involves winter break. Uh, this is seeking to move a split day, teacher work day, professional development day, meant to prepare for second semester from the beginning of winter break, currently slated for December 21st, to January 4th, which would no longer be a student day. Instead, teachers will spend that day preparing for second semester, that Monday, January 4th. This change would remove one student day and one contract day. Addressing these changes is change number three to the start of the school year. Uh, based on successful experiences for the 1920 school year, new teacher days will again be offered for four days in 2021. Um, all teachers will report one day earlier on August 11th versus August 12th as it's currently slated, gaining back our teacher contract day lost to change number two. Students will also report one day earlier as well on August 18th versus August 19th, gaining back our student day lost to change number two. I would now open it up for any questions you may have. Does anybody have any questions? Mrs. Cracky. So, so what we're saying is teachers are going to work on uh, the voting day so we are not being disrupted or so there's plenty of room for them to set up their voting booths and everything in the gyms like they do. Correct. Okay, and so then we're going to come a day earlier to do that. Any, anytime we start chunking away at the beginning of the school year like that on the summer thing, I mean, 
that's where we get pushed back and people don't like coming earlier and earlier and then they fret over that so I would imagine that we will be hearing something about that. I understand about the disruption and the people in the buildings. Yet I can remember being there when they did come and I didn't feel the impact was negative anywhere where I was. We just had visitors in and out. But I understand about the gym and the booths or a room in the building. Sometimes they put a room uh, that they aren't using or find a spot in the building that time. It's all kind of complicated. But we do want to take part in the voting process and be sure that people get in to vote. So I'm, I'm just putting it out there because that's my thought on what we will be hearing. Thank you. Mrs. Godding. I want to thank the administration and staff for moving election day to a um, non-student day. Uh, it's probably one of the most concerning days I hear from parents. Um, they really don't want their kids in the building when strangers to them are there all day long. So I really appreciate that move, and I, I, I think that's a good one. Um, the one positive I see on the August 18th day is that this year we were a number of days ahead of that. I think August 14th for high school and August 13th for everybody else. And so this is five days after. I would have loved that. I'll be done as a parent next year, but uh, I think August 18th is an awesome um, opportunity to get school started from a little bit later standpoint than we typically are, and it certainly probably moves us still behind where other districts are, or later than other districts, which we always hear from parents is one of the things they want. So I think these are great changes. Really appreciate that election day. Uh, Mrs. Cassidy. Thank you. I'd like to echo um, Board Member Godding's comments. Um, first of all, I have had the pleasure of being on election duty, I don't know, three times, four times, the maximum I've been on election duty. Um, and every single time I have served, it has been at an elementary school. And it, I found it disruptive just as a poll worker having students in the building. So I uh, echo your comments that I think this is a, a great change and um, the 18th, I also feel is very, um, it's very logical. This is, I think this is a change parents are going to like. And the little bit later in the summer, even just a few days, kids will enjoy as well. So thank you for all your hard work. Any other comments from the board? Uh, I appreciate it as well. Um, this building here is my voting location. And if anybody that works in TAC, when you see that lobby on a, for any election day, it's very chaotic. We have a virtual school here, and those students and families in it from the front, so I do understand that, as well as moving uh, those dates back. I will entertain a motion to approve. Uh, I need a motion. This is an action item, so. I make a motion that we adopt all of the changes as proposed by the administration regarding the calendar changes. Second. There's a motion on the floor to adopt uh, the calendar revisions. J1A by Mrs. Godding, second by Mr. Smith. Any more discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Smith? Aye. Snipe? Aye. Smell? Aye. Cassidy? Aye. Godding? Aye. Cracky? Aye. Perlman? Aye. Seven aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to item J1B. This was on the consent agenda and pulled off. I believe it was Mr. Perlman. You have the floor. I just have a few questions about this resolution. It's on. Move closer. I just have a few questions about this resolution. Um, I guess historically, has has something like this been done before, where gifts are received, large gifts received directly by the district? Yes, periodically we do get requests from the public to donate shares directly to the district. I believe two years ago we had a situation where that occurred. And did the district receive that gift? I do not know. I know there was a request two years ago. I'm not sure whether or not we were able to receive those shares at that time. Okay. I'm also wondering 
how the district typically receives large gifts like this currently? Yeah, currently we get a combination of both. Well, the district directly receives cash. In the past, we've had benefactors um, or others in the public have typically donated to a foundation who in turn donates the cash or transfers the cash to the district. And what would be some of the reasons or the primary reasons why a large benefactor would prefer to donate funds to a foundation rather than the district itself? Yeah, I think this is really an issue of overall governance. As I came in as the new CFO and started looking at our current policies and treasury solutions, I want to make sure that the district is positioned where we have a generous donor come to the table and want to donate shares directly to the district, that we're in a position to be able to accept those shares and have a mechanism to be able to trade those immediately as to not take market risk and be able to liquidate into cash for our, our operating benefit. So is this specific to stocks or, or gifts, generally speaking? Well, gifts in cash, there's, there's not necessarily an issue. We have mechanisms to receive cash. We don't have proper policy or governance today to be able to accept shares directly or have a policy around what to do with that stock once it's received. So is it generally best practice to, I mean, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's a matter of governance. So what specifically in that realm are you referring to? Is it that it's best practice to receive the funds directly or to not have it pass through a foundation or something different? Well, I, th I think it's always better for the district to receive funds or bequests from the public directly. Um, there's really not a reason to run those through a foundation or an in intermediary. Our policy would be to receive those shares, immediately liquidate upon receipt so that we're not accepting any market risk on trading and um, then be able to utilize the funds in which they were designed. Are there any advantages for donors to uh, provide gifts to foundations, uh, 501c3s versus the district directly? I believe it's the same either way. The same? Whether they donate directly to the district or through a foundation. Okay. I do have a few other questions. So. If this resolution passes, then what policies or practices or procedures are anticipated to be implemented to make sure that this, these gifts are uh, handled appropriately? Sure. So we would have a designated brokerage account with our current lead provider, a U.S. Bank. Uh, we are going out uh, to an RFP in the spring, so that could be a different provider. But currently it'd be with U.S. Bank, we would have a policy in place to, upon receipt of shares, to immediately, at market rate, liquidate those shares and turn those into cash. The policy would not be to hold those shares in any way, shape, or form. If what the district is transitioning to is best practice, can you give us any understanding of why it hasn't been done that way in the past in OPS? and? why I believe most school districts have foundations to receive such gifts? Yeah, I, I can't speak to that, but I could certainly look into it further. Okay. Anyone else have any? I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Perlman, are you? Do you have more? I apologize. I guess my, my only other question is, is there any other thing besides that this is uh, a better governance practice that led to the to this resolution being before us today. Anything at all? No. Okay. Thank you. I will entertain a motion, and then we can still open it up for questions if anybody else. Item J one B. I can't make the motion myself, so. <clears throat> so 
So um, just to let you guys so know. Moved. So okay, okay, thank you. So is there a second? So just to let you guys know, this goes into our general fund, and the district cannot operate if we don't have these funds come to the district. I have a question. Fully effectively. That. Is it general fund or is it restricted fund? I think it's restricted, but okay. there are things that we have going. So there's motion by Ms. Snipe. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Smith. There's a second by Mr. Smith. Okay, discussion. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Ms. Cracky. In the past, there was a time when this type of thing, not exactly stocks, but other things in the monetary value were up for discussion through the foundation, et cetera. And I think we've gotten away from that feeling that in the foundation, the money could go, but it could also go somewhere else immediately instead of through the foundation funding. And that would be up to personal people who wanted to do something on their own. And so I'm looking at this, and it's kind of um, iffy. I'm not sure just exactly what we're trying to say here or why it came up on the agenda. Because so, you said we didn't know priorly that it was here, and we're not seeing enough about it. I don't have enough information, I don't think. So we receive these funds already. It just flows through a nonprofit. So what we're doing now is cutting out the middle guy and it's going directly to the district. So by the time it hits the bank account, it liquidates. So it doesn't sit with the foundation. I mean, right now it goes directly to the district and I do believe a staff person will be, actually Mr. Roberts will be that person uh, administrating that, our CFO. And then he will work with the foundation on some of that? I mean, he, would, he would be the point of contact, yes. Any other discussion? Mr. Perlman. Who who will be administering who who will be administering these funds? Uh, who's who's going to be accounting for these? At the district, you mean? Or from outside the district? So our partner with U.S. Bank oversees the administration of the account itself, and we will designate myself and probably one other senior individual from the district to authorize transactions to will actually have to liquidate those shares when received is that being funded from a donor is it being funded what by by a donor the accountant. fees for the account no the the accountant to oversee this this money oh already on staff paid for by the general fund are any donor funds being used to pay for that position no we currently have the staff to do it the donor authorized us to post a position that they will pay for the position was just recently posted mr wakefield do you want to come up and the position that was posted mm -hmm. we posted an accounting position to help with uh, tracking and monitoring grant funds across the board uh, we have a grant person who monitors the grants coming in and the writing of grants and reports of grants but wanted to uh, with donor support track those grant funds as we expend those so we can do a better job of reporting and tracking how we spend those funds that position just recently posted and should be filled in the next 30 days or so Mrs. Gotting. Would we as a board, and I know this has come up in the past, I know Mrs. Fay always asked this question, would we as a board please be able to see then um, an accounting report um, on a regular basis of grant fund disbursements and what the funds are being used for, grant fund accounting? I would defer to Mr. Roberts. Sure, absolutely. That would be great. Maybe, yeah, I mean, you guys can talk about how that would appear but I think it would be good for us to see that whether it be on a monthly basis or on the financial statements sure. when we get those or at some time um, I know it's been a long requested request so that would be awesome Mr. Pullen. sorry I was gonna say I think probably quarterly probably because many of the funds are used to for positions and so there's not 
as much um, activity uh, for you to see it monthly, but quarterly would probably, I think, suffice. No, that makes okay. sense. Whatever, whatever makes the most sense, but I think it would be a good thing to see. Thank you. Mr. Perlman. Will there be any uh, impact uh, to the district potentially or otherwise on state aid receiving the money this way? No, there will not. Can you explain to the board how how that works? Because I'm, you know, Tiosa is notorious for being complicated. But at a basic level, my understanding was it was needs um, relative to resources. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's an oversimplification, but yeah, typically dollars are, re are received in this fashion are restricted funds and calculated outside Tiosa. because they're donated for a designated purpose. And again, the, the reason for this change is? Well, we need to provide an opportunity. There could be, uh, it's for the convenience of the donor, if you will, in part, where if a donor wants to contribute something of value, stock, to the district, and they wish not to donate directly to a foundation, but directly to the district, we do not have a mechanism today to allow that to happen. And we want generous donors to be able to have an easy and open and, and governed solution to be able to donate money to this district to enable us to advance our cause. Well, the district, since this appears to be a, a preferred method of <clears throat> receiving large gifts from a governance standpoint, is the district doing anything to uh, encourage uh, large contributions to not go through the foundation anymore? No. There's, there's no policy to direct it one way or the other. This is providing donors an opportunity to contribute directly to the district. And I would say it's not just large contributions. It could be small as well. So what staffing needs will uh, be um, required to uh, administer uh, all this? Yeah, there's nothing really special. The position Mr. Wakefield was talking about is our grants accounting group, which really tracks and reports against grants that we're receiving from foundations and others. The mechanism by which we're implementing the solution, the fee structure is very, very small with U.S. Bank between five dollars and twenty nine dollars for each trade for each stock we receive so the costs are de minimis the resources that would manage that account and that process under governance by the district would be myself and our our chief accounting officer or controller for the company is there any actual impact to the omaha public schools foundation by this change Mr. Mr. Um, Roberts wouldn't speak to the Omaha Public Schools Foundation as a separate entity, and he wouldn't be able to speak to that. Um, I am the treasurer of the Omaha Public Schools Foundation, and I would not speak to that as well. Okay. okay. And, and how much money are we anticipating this every year coming into the district? I wouldn't say there's a budget at all. This is a solution to provide a mechanism by which anybody in the public who wishes to donate stock to the district can donate stock. Today, if we had that offer today, we would not be able to receive those shares or that gift or any appreciable property. I guess what, what prevented the district from, from doing so? If someone wants to donate a house, why can't they donate a house? I mean, why do we need why do we need a resolution to do that? When it comes to stock in particular, excuse me, we need a mechanism by which to receive those shares. That's different than if somebody wanted to donate a house or a property to the district. And currently we don't have governance or policy that enables the district to actually receive stock in particular directly from the public. What about cash? Can can someone from the public give cash to the district currently? Yes. Do they? Uh, 
Yeah. I can't speak to that. I'm, I do I'm sure people have yeah. given cash to the district in the past. I mean, uh, so the answer would be yes, but he's talking about stock. And well, I know, but uh, I, the reason I ask it because it, it goes into my next question, and, and that is, again, what policies, investment policies, and, and so forth are, are going to be developed uh, relative to this, I guess, presumed um, donations? Yeah, I don't think investment policy is, is relevant because our policy that we're proposing is upon any receipt of stock from the public, the day it hits our U.S. bank account, it will be immediately liquidated and turned into cash. So this isn't a market speculation situation where we want to hold shares and assume market risk up or down over time from that property. Right, but for example, how, how long could that money be held? Where would it be held? What type of accounts? What sort of oversights? What sort of auditing? Those sorts of things that I believe that the foundation currently does have policies on. Yeah, it wouldn't be treated any different than any other receipts the district currently receives. They go into our general operating fund with U.S. Bank. So in this particular case, there's a brokerage account with U.S. Bank. Upon liquidation and settlement of that trade, those funds will immediately transfer to our main U.S. Bank account that we use for all of our operating today. Okay. Thank you, and thanks to whoever's donating the stock. I appreciate it. Mrs. Gotti. I have one question that was prompted by some of, some of the other questions, and you may not know the answer, and I don't know why we're getting such bad feedback tonight. But um, on the statement in that position, will these fl funds flow through governmental activities, or will it flow into the other column that I can't remember what the title of the other column is? Do you know the answer to that question? I can look into it and get back to you. Yeah, if you could, because today they flow through the middle column and not through governmental activities. So I just want to understand if that's what's going to continue to happen. I would think it would not flow through governmental activity since it's restricted, but I just want to make sure. That's a good question. Any other questions, comments from the board? All right. You're good. All right, so the item. There is a motion on the floor by Ms. Snipe, a second by, I believe, Mr. Smith. Roll call, please. Snipe. Aye. Sano. Aye. Cassidy. Aye. Gotti. Aye. Cracky. It's very hard to just make this vote because it's something new here. And if the stock has been flowing through all along, and now it's talking about the fees range, I didn't know that there were fees attached to things when they went through like that. Has this been our practice? The people who are donating, there's somehow a fee attached to the a, sale a, transaction? You can't talk. There's a, there's a motion on the floor. The room on roll call. Well, it, so I'll pass. There's a no vote. Okay. Are you abstaining or not voting? Because you can do both. I'm not voting. Next, Mr. Ray. Perlman? No. Smith? Aye. Five aye. Motion carries. Motion passes. Thank you. That's the end of the meeting, I believe, closed session. No, we don't, actually. Man. It's a long day. Okay, moving on to information item. I believe we have, I closed my tablet and everything. It's following our superintendent. She looked like she was ready to go. I was ready to go. <laughs> moving on to J2A uh, budget committee update. Our budget chair, Mrs. Gotti. So we had a meeting with our auditors and um, at this point, the vast majority of our issues from last year have been resolved. The qualified opinion, which we had last year um, regarding GASB Statement 75, um, we have hired an actuary, and it looks like we had a $22 million um, liability that will flow through our financial statements, similar to 
the way that the um, unfunded liability on the pension also flows through. The material weaknesses and internal control over financial reporting appear to be resolved. Um, I believe we're still working on the significant deficiency in internal control over financial reporting, if I'm not correct. Um, and we've done, mo or they've completed most of the single audit work on major programs. They have a few audit adjustments, obviously the biggest one being the net pension liability. Um, they plan at this point to present the audit to the Board of Education on November 18th and then to submit the audit to the state on November 19th. Um, we also had just a short presentation from David Trot Trottenberg. I want to make sure I get that name right regarding budgeting and he just walked us through some of the similar information that the board's already seen as, the, as we get ready for the um, strategic plan and moving forward with that. So that is my uh, report. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask and I'll see if I can answer. Any questions for Mrs. Gotting? Thank you, Mrs. Gotting. I believe there's another meeting coming up in uh, December for budget or at the end of the month. I think it's at the end of November. That's fine. I, I can find it. Moving on to item J2B, uh, student assignment plan, Mrs. Cassidy. Thank you. Uh, the student assignment plan committee, we met on October 14th. We really um, devoted most of this meeting to looking at um, the history and the timeline for uh, different grade co configurations uh, within OPS over the years, specifically for junior high and middle schools, um, just to kind of see how we've gotten to this point with our grade configurations as they are today. Uh, this is kind of building the foundation as to what changes are ahead, what are going to be the best choices We've been working with curriculum and research and we'll continue to work with them to um, come to the best decisions for the current and present situations that we have with regard to our student assignment plan. So we will be meeting again on November 11th to continue uh, discussing this process as we've got a long ways to go. But we will meet, be meeting on November 11th. And if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them as well. Thank you. Do I have any questions for Ms. Cassidy? The budget meeting, um, committee meeting is November 18th. So, for those that would like to know, there's no receipt of reports. Um, Mrs. Cassidy. I move that the Board of Education go into closed session for the protection of the public interest and for the prevention of needless injury to the reputation of individuals to discuss with the superintendent, secretary to the board, and legal counsel legal advice, negotiations, pending litigation, and real estate. There's a motion to go into closed session uh, by Ms. Cassidy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Snipe. Roll call, please. Snow. Aye. Cassidy. Aye. Gotting. Oh, aye. Sorry. Cracky. Aye. Bowman. Aye. Smith. Aye. Snipe. Aye. Seven aye. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Let me remind the board that the purpose for closed session for the protection of the public interest and for the, the prevention of needless injury to the reputation of individuals to discuss with the superintendent, secretary to the board, and legal counsel. Legal advice, negotiations, penny litigation, and real estate. Let the record reflect the board went into closed session at 737. Thank you, guys.
Let the record reflect the. Let the record reflect the board came out of closed session at eight oh eight. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.